I made it better. Yeah. Mr. Brown can moo. F you. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I like it. I like it a lot. You didn't use it, though. <laughs> uh, okay. I think we're good. You want to do this? Right. Yes. Okay. Here it comes, then. Uh, oh, you would want to update now, wouldn't you? I'm not letting you. Okay. Here we go. Begins in three, two, one. Coming up on TMS, watch out for sharp objects. Spaghetti mouth cometh. Burger King feels bad about it. How micro are your blades? He thought they were aliens. Therapy Thursday and more on this episode of The Morning Stream. I'm the observer, my friend. When there is more than meets the eye, I will let you know. Shall we go in? Yes, we'll go in. This is the morning stream. Behave yourselves. Welcome back to the show, everybody. It is the morning stream for April 18th, 2019. Scott Johnson here, Brian Ibbett there. Good morning. Yes. Hello. Thurs- Good morning. It's Thursday. Uh, <laughs> one week from today, I'll be in a car rushing my way down the uh, the highways and byways of my fine state to meet you in Las Vegas, Nevada. Nice. Yeah. I'll have already done so much damage to my liver yeah. by then. Yeah. Brian no, will be in a, let's see, it's nine o'clock, so he'll be in a bar. Uh, <laughs> pounding down. It'll tequila. be eight a.m. when, uh, like, like uh, one week from right the second. It oh, be... right. <clears throat> like, forget we shift over to the Pacific time zone. We do. Yes. Yep. Everything's got to be different. Yep. In Vegas. Yep. Got it. Can't do anything the same. That'll be our old time though. Before the change here recently, so we'll be back to our normal. Uh, right. Because yeah. it was that spring forward. Matter. Yeah. Exactly. But that. Time time operates differently for me in Las Vegas. Same, um, same. It doesn't. I don't even think about it while I'm there, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, Is it it's light like, out? Oh, Is it night it's 10 out? Ten o'clock. All yeah. right, let's go do. Let's go do something. Whereas here, it's like <laughs> ten o'clock. What am I still doing upright? Yeah, that's a good point. I'm still kind of like that in Vegas. <laughs> although, although tonight is um, is mystery date night. Tina's uh, turn to pick something for the two of us. I have absolutely no idea what's going on, and whatever it is, it starts at 9 p.m. Oh my like gosh! Our, what weird? Like a Thursday night, a school night. Mm-hmm. We're going out at nine o'clock for mystery date, and I seriously have no idea what that could possibly mean. Zero clue. Let me think for a second. Zero clue. What could happen at nine? I mean, I was thinking, all right, it could be like one of those fathom event things, but those don't start at nine. No. Or a concert, perhaps. But again. I don't know. Yeah, why would I start at <laughs> nine on a Thursday? <laughs> Brave Hope Wright just simply says, sex. <laughs> yeah. That's all it is. I mean, yeah. duh. Yeah, she's clear. She's figured it out. Right, exactly. Uh, I'm really curious yeah, I don't now. Know what would be at 9 p.m. on a Thursday night? It's really weird. You're going to have to You're gonna have to fill us in. That's like a... I will. It's like a primetime drama. That's what time that is. Yeah. Are there any movies coming out this weekend that would have like an early opening... Hmm. Looks like you're rotten tomatoes. Let's take a look here. I don't want to do any movies that give any of our competitors uh, a fair shake. Agree. Yeah, no fair fair shakes. We got our stuff. All right. We already have a bit of a leg up because I don't know if you heard, but uh, all pre-sale box office records broken by Endgame. Yes. I know. Could that count now? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Totally counts. We count that counts as money. For us, so we're good. I know. I love that. I love it. Uh, you got your Shazam, but that's already out. Um, already out. See. So opening this week, the curse of La Llorona. What the hell is that? The Weeping Widow. Uh, it's twenty the, uh, horror movie. Linda Cardellini. Uh, oh. uh, Spanish uh, horror film thing. It's twenty eight percent. Breakthrough. Of all. I don't. Yeah, not not good. Um, breakthrough. Teen Spirit. Oh, the breakthroughs this churchy thing where they all sit around. And oh, is that pray. the ice? Is that the ice one? The kids go through the ice. No, I think it's. Oh, is it? Maybe. Oh, I it think is that's the, the kid. One where the kids You're fall right. through the ice, and You're then right. there's lots of there's lots of praying. It's got Chrissy Metz from This Is Us. Yeah, dude, I am so glad that thing is coming out. I am so happy. Yeah, because 
they won't show the previews before any of my other movies that I want to go see anymore because yeah. I'm so sick of that. Where's where's Kirk, is Kirk Cameron involved with this one somehow? No, but Topher Grace is in it, and that's weird because, uh, like, when they they do these things now where they don't have to be the the cast is just a cast. It's the producers, right. directors, and all of that that are like, oh, we're gonna make another Christian film. It's so they're just there <laughs> getting paid, you know, these these actors. So, right, I don't know. This yeah. stuff drives me crazy. It's fine. Disney Disney Nature Penguins is coming out. That's something I definitely want to see, but I don't see Tina saying, yeah, the best time to go see a movie about penguins is going to be 9 o'clock on a Thursday night. <laughs> mm. How about Under the Silver Lake? Mm. Uh, let's see here. It is a... Uh, uh, what the heck is it? It is a... What's this called? Uh, oh, here it is. I can't even tell what kind of movie it is here. Sam, I'm looking... Sam is a disenchanted 33-year-old oh, played by uh, Andrew Garfield who discovers a mysterious woman, Sarah, frolicking in his apartment's a, a swimming pool. When she vanishes, Sam embarks on a surreal quest al across Los Angeles to decode and uh, the secret behind her disappearance, leading him to the murkiest depths of mystery, scandal, and conspiracy in the city of angels. What follows can only be described as an erotic journey from Compton to La Jolla. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> not into it. Don't yep, care. Nope. 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 Not into it. All right. Well, so I don't think it's a movie. I think that rules out. Um, oh, I do want to see Hail Satan. That opens this weekend. Have you heard of this? No. So, is it a movie that's entirely Obama played backwards? <laughs> no. No. In oh. fact, it, we've talked about it on the show before because we have people calling about it, but it's those. Um, it's the uh, temple, Satan's temple or whatever religion that is doesn't really care about Satan. Oh, All they want to do is like... Right, right, right. This is the whole thing. Well, not the whole thing, but like uh, uh, tangentially related to that um, Adventures of Sabrina. I mean, there's it's it's got that goat, the Satan goat. Oh, right, the goat. Thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's how it yes. came up on the show. That's right. Uh, yeah, and they they this documentary apparently is real good and uh, hmm. just just discusses why they exist and how they're just there to kind of hold the Constitution to feet to the fire, so that right. uh, government doesn't show preferential treatment to one religion over another. And so, I'm really interested in that. Um, I, as you know, on this show, I've stated many times, I'm a gigantic hmm. fan of the separation of church and state. I think it's a huge mm -hmm. important thing, and we should adhere to it whenever possible. And so apparently this uh, uh, digs through that a little bit. And is it currently a 95%, which sounds about right for what I've heard. So there you go. Cool, cool. Uh, and there's another thing here, Brian. Here's one for you. How about this this weekend? Maybe this is what she's taking right. you to at 9 okay, o'clock tonight. All right, let's see. Tell me, tell me, what is it? A movie called Whoops. Daddy's Issues. <laughs> that sounds like fun. It's a documentary about the stripper industry. <laughs> yes. Uh, actually, this is, uh, let's see. Maya. Is it daddy's issues or daddy issues? Sorry, daddy. I said daddy's, didn't I? Okay. Yeah, Carl's yeah. Jr. Uh, it says here, Maya, a 19-year-old queer pixie, spends her days working on her art and cyber-stalking her Insta-crush. Boy, this sounds great. The sexually fluid fashion designer, <laughs> Jasmine. One night, Maya boldly meets Jasmine, IRL. There's mm. a, there's an Insta- Oh, that means in real life. <laughs> it does. It says there's an Insta Spark. That's a takeoff on Instagram. See, okay, Insta Spark, uh -huh. sure. Uh -huh. And the two begin uh, begin an inspiring romantic relationship that gives Maya her first taste of true love and Jasmine the inspiration she needs to jumpstart her career. Hmm. You know what? Hey, you know uh, uh, this this doesn't sound like the movie for me, but it does sound uh, uh, entertaining. How about this part? It's all gumdrops and fairy tales until Maya discovers Jasmine is a codependent or in a codependent relationship with a neurotic sugar daddy. What started as a oh. dream comes true into a beautiful nightmare. <laughs> it turns into an erotic journey from Kalamazoo to <laughs> South Bend. <laughs> to Minsk. Anyway. From Milan to, to Minsk, Minsk. A young woman's erotic journey from Milan <laughs> to Minsk. <laughs> Yeah, this whole thing is no good. I don't like it. Uh, all right. Hey, no, I had a funny right. dream last night. I would like to share it with you because it has to do with Las Vegas and a thing that you're sure. going to do there. Oh, okay. Wow. Excellent. I like this. Weirdest dream. 
uh, and this was a nap dream because I took a little bit of a shorty last night. A little, a little shorty nap dream. dream. Yeah. Uh-huh. Still and, had a shorty. Uh, yeah. Sometimes those provide the best dreams or the weirdest dreams, but this sure. is a case of the weirdest. I had a dream that somebody slipped some kind of growing pill into like a Coke. I was drinking a <laughs> okay. Coke. And we're all there not with a, all our... uh, Not a... Uh, a blue chew no 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 no. for like uh not like a viagra or something like an anuckchuck growing pill no (laughs) yes like like apache chief would get in his drink (laughs) okay so i somebody slipped it in there i don't know who it was but somebody at this vegas meetup put it in there and then i got so big and so awkward that i was just kind of rumbling around downtown vegas and i ended up impaling myself on the stratosphere (laughs) <laughs> and that's when I woke up. I fell over okay. and went shunk. The stratosphere went right through my chest. I have no idea what that means. Jeez. Is that weird Jeez. or what? That is weird. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to take from that. Like, uh, did you have you been thinking about being large size? No. Have you been having giantess? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, not giantess one, not a one. Fantasies? No, not nope. at all. No. I haven't seen any movies with giant people. I haven't seen, hmm. I mean, other than discussing Vegas and talking about the stratosphere with you, that's the only yeah. access to that. So I don't, I have no idea. I mean, I've long believed that my dreams mean nothing because they're all too weird. Nothing makes sense in my dreams. So this is just yeah. par for the course. When I was a little kid, I would have dreams that just made no freaking sense. And it's the same now. So there you go. Someone put, a, right. someone put a grow yeah, pill in my Yeah, analyze coat. that, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Someone put some coke in my grow pills. <laughs> <laughs> I knocked Chuck, and then I killed myself. Fantastic. <laughs> so, somebody speaking of that, speaking of the jump, somebody uh, emailed me just now, uh, a re- not a recipe, but a drink that I need to have like as a toast before I do the big jump called the Adios Emmer Effer. Oh, I see this from uh, Jordan, or Jay Gordon, sorry. He's, yeah, did we he, send it to you too? He copied me on it, apparently. So look, gotcha. that's a crazy looking mix. You tell me, tell yes. everybody what right, that so is. So here's what we got. Here's what's in the Adios MRF. All right. Uh, one ounce right. vodka, one ounce rum, one ounce gin, one ounce tequila, two ounces of sweet and sour mix, one ounce of lemon <laughs> lime soda, one ounce of blue curacao, and then you garnish it with a lemon slice and a cherry, which that's, just feels like. <laughs> isn't that like, all? What? That's all drinks together. That's just going to. That's like swamp water that's, at the gas station. That's four four alcohols and uh, actually five because the blue curacao is a mix or is a alcohol a, a liqueur. Yeah. Liqueur. Wait, explain to me uh, what a sweet and sour mix is. It sounds Chinese. Sweet and sour mix. No, no, sweet and sour mix is just uh, it's what they add to like margaritas and amaretto sours. That's cheap. Okay. It, when when they when they're too lazy to make their own. Uh, sweet and sour mix out of like um, uh, lemon and lime and, and mm. stuff like that. Mm. It's uh, it's it. usually it looks like antifreeze usually. <laughs> oh, great. Well, this sounds like yeah. the this sounds like a uh, your last drink ever kind of drink, doesn't it? No, no. I mean, this is only uh, this is like one ounce, one ounce, one ounce. So it's really just five ounces of of uh, alcohol. I mean, five, not even five shots because a shot is usually an ounce and a half. Oh, so that's it's, it? okay. I didn't realize it's that. like uh, two and a half. But it's literally uh, called shots. the Adios Mother Effer. Yeah. Like it's a goodbye drink. It's like, uh, hey, I'm drinking everything at once. Goodbye, everybody. It's been great. See ya. Like that's well, what... sure. But <laughs> what it's called, I mean, uh, a Bloody Mary doesn't have blood in it, Scott. Nah, that's a good point. <laughs> they, have, they have names. Doesn't, These things have names that are. Doesn't have Mary in oh. it either. Yeah. Let's hope. Yeah. Let's hope. No, Mary's not um, interested. So I will absolutely, uh, totally do one of these before i'll totally do a shot of one of these with anybody else who wants to do a shot of one of these before i do my jump and there's a couple of us doing the jump too three three or four of us Mm. Uh, i know kt data uh who's often in the chat room is going to do the jump um uh there was somebody else in the discord who was talking about the jump y'all are doing this at the exact same time you jump off same time can you do that or they not let you no 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 we've got to go in succession captain monk is is uh, going um and i'm wondering should i be the first one or should i be i think i should be the first one oh yeah yeah you should lead the charge absolutely yeah don't be last uh also you're it's i don't know it feels like less if something goes bad with the first two you'll have you'll have bad feelings about it. If you go first. <laughs> it goes bad with the first two. So they're going to be like, oh, wow. 
the slowing down mechanism didn't work. Well, let's send a second guy. Let's see if that fixes yeah, it. Yeah. Like, no? Send the second guy down. Third, All right. Third, uh, well, third uh, Brian, you're next. Uh, <laughs> give you the option. Do you want to go? <laughs> Things appear to be broken, but would you? <laughs> All right. This is a fair point. Hadn't really hadn't thought it through. Yeah. Uh, all right, I want you to make it. This guy says, he says in that email that, that uh, every hotel makes this, and he says it's a go-to, uh, but he says it's the only time he'll break his rule of drinking anything that's the same color as Windex, he says. Mm, so that must be that great. blue you're talking that's about. the blue Curacao, yeah, for okay. sure. I think he sent us separate emails. He didn't CC, like, I don't see you listed on this one, and I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, you're right. It says, when in Vegas, you must have this cocktail, especially when you're gambling, or in Brian's case, gambling with his life yeah he he knows you he knows that that uh you're not going to go from drinking none of the alcohols to drinking all of the alcohols <laughs> no, no i'm not no this was definitely aimed at you but i thought it was just yeah. copied but i guess not he sent two emails maybe yeah maybe he wanted to see if uh, we could read that one on the show dude is thorough he is thorough you know what i'll uh i'll absolutely do one of these or as my grandma totally. would say he's thorough she'd say thorough mm -hmm. very thorough she's very thorough Cool. Uh, all right. Also, a uh, quick thanks and shout out to the following individuals. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Rob Dalton. He's a rad dude. He um, is. He's a member of that Dalton gang. He is. Always trouble. <laughs> One of them Dalton brothers. Yeah. You got to call in. The, what were the, who are the guys you always call in to, to catch them? The... Uh, uh, they the, were like the... Uh, uh, they regulators. Like, no, the freaking... They have a name... The, the Pinkertons. Get the, seven. get the oh, Pinkertons. Get the Pinkertons. Yeah, always sure, get a Pinkerton. Sure. Anyway, <clears throat> he... Uh, if you can find him, <laughs> the A-Team. <laughs> only if you can find him. See, that was the biggest problem with the A-Team. You could only use them if you could find them. If you could find them, exactly. Yeah, yeah. what's that about? That's bad it, marketing. It seemed, like a, it seemed like bad marketing. It, seemed, it was almost as flimsy as the, uh, the Mission Impossible thing, that if you were not... Shoot, I wasn't paying attention, and my mission just self-destructed in front of me. Dang it, yeah. I got to learn to pay attention when that thing is... Uh, yeah, and if you're not careful, it'll, my... it'll blow your head off, or sometimes those right. things would burn you. Well, anyway, so, Rob Dalton, anyway, he, right. works at Rob C Dalton. he works at CNBC, uh, oh. home of... Uh, it's That's like their financial network. It's the home of that yeah. dude that's always going, bing, bang, boom! Mad money dude. Uh, mad yes. money Miller time. I don't know what it is. Mad, <laughs> Mad Miller, Mad, Mad Matt and his monkey. Well, it's Mad Money. He's uh, Kramer. Jim uh, Kramer. Jim Kramer. Jim Kramer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Used to argue all the time with John, uh, John Stewart. Anyway, mm, uh, right. he works there, and he sent me this. I mean, like a legit. You'd see it on uh, some famous anchor's desk mug from CNBC with like the the peacock stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, a T-shirt that says crew on the back. So I got like this <laughs> crew shirt. And then he sent a hat that actually fits. Oh, I was going to wear it today and I forgot. Anyway, it actually fits. Barely because my head's huge, but it fits. <laughs> had to had to go to the very last dot, very last uh, peg on that trucker strap. <laughs> yep. So that was super nice of him. And then um, also uh, a kid who's like 11 or 10 or something Sent mm -hmm. uh, film. He sent you eleven or 12, 10 or eleven year old kid. Different oh, kid, different person. Oh, yeah, different thing. Different. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Look at CNBC's got some cool swag. They send you a kid if you want. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, this kid sent a uh, film sack four copies of an old trauma movie that we looks like we just have to watch. So that'll be coming to you soon. And I don't have his cool. name here. If I had his name here, I'd say it. But on film sack, I will. And then also the most important of of the day, I think, because. Now I'm just a little fatter because of it. Uh, Barry and Bobby Ann Folk from... Oh, yeah. Uh, you know them. Yeah. From... Uh, yeah. Where are they from? Chicago. They're Chicago. They are from Chicago. With all our Chicago-style pizza discussion, they sent a bunch yes. of Chicago-style... Did you get these two? I did. Luminati's. Yes. Oh, they're so good, dude. They are good. Have you had Luminati's... Uh, Luminati's uh, sausage pizza? No. Not yet. Have I... I think... Have I, have I described... What's unusual about a Lou Malnati's, uh sausage pizza? No, I would like to know what's unusual about it. <laughs> I wonder if I, I should wait until you experience it. No, I think I've got to tell you. Because there's one of those in the freezer that is a sausage one. Is that what I'm yes. looking for? Yeah, you probably got a sausage, a, a cheese, and a spinach or something. A spinach, and then one was pepperoni, I think, or maybe. Oh, pepperoni. I don't okay. remember. I don't remember. Yes, yeah, so it is... Uh, uh, you know, just when you describe a, a regular sausage pizza from your Domino's or your Pizza Hut or what have you, yeah. 
it's a pizza. And they've taken bits of sausage and lovingly went blunk, 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 and, and placed sausage on the pizza. And they're only the size of, like, ferret turds. They're just little... Yeah, like a uh, little, like, uh, pe- snap peas or, or uh, maybe for lucky the size of edamame. Yeah. <laughs> They're like a raisin. Right. They're like little raisins. Right. Kind exactly. Of. Meat raisins. No, no, no. <laughs> the Luminati sausage pizza is a disc yeah. the size of the pizza that is sausage. Really? <laughs> it's like you've taken it's like you've taken uh like you've taken Jimmy Dean and put him through a roller Ooh. and flattened him out. It is a disc of sausage. You could take this thing out, put it on the turntable. And it would play Veronica Belmont for thirty-three and a half, or thirty-three and a third RPMs. <laughs> so wait a minute, like a yes. like a like a sausage McMuffin, but big, right? Yeah, there you go. Yes, exactly. Like a big patty of sausage, not little like broken up big, pieces. Like a patty, like a disc, a ginormous disc of sausage. That's crazy. All right, it is so damn good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had but the cheese. We had the cheese in the uh, what do you call it last night? The uh, the, the one with spinach in it. Fan, oh, oh yeah, it's so it's good, dude! All that it's cheese is yeah. so good, oh. and it's really good crust. And it's like, it is better than it should be for a pizza that you that has been frozen, sent across the country, and uh, and cooked in your oven. Yeah, it's insane, and it's got that crust that's more like pie crust than crust. Yes, it's right. so Deep freaking fish. good. I, and I realize yeah. a lot of people think that's an abomination that it shouldn't be even called pizza. That's something wholly different. I don't. Whatever, man. It's good. That's all I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, we loved it, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and they deserve our hearty thanks for uh, thinking of us. And man, yes. we should think about what next food we want to obsess about on the show, so people will send it to us. What do you think? We are about almost. That? Uh, we are almost uh, best friends in Pokemon Go. Me and the Folkses. Me and Barry and Bobby Ann. Ah, very nice. Does that mean you you exchange balls, or what do you do? What do you do? We there? exchange gifts, uh, and at some point we will exchange a gift and be lucky. And and that means we can also trade Pokemon for cheaper. Oh, so okay. Uh, with less less Pokemon cost. <laughs> well, as uh, as somebody who is, well, wait, what does it cost you to if you trade a Pokemon? What do you? Yes. What do you, are you just trading the creatures, or is there other uh, currency involved? What do you? There's do? other currency involved. So the Pokemon swap, you know, the the the, the uh, depending on the level of rarity of the Pokemon, mm. um it'll like go up to up to a million stardust stardust is the currency that takes place with the trade the better friends you are the less of that currency you spend and the less rare or unique to you like if it's a pokemon you don't have that's automatically more expensive it's okay. a, if it's a shiny version of something you don't have yeah. that's automatically more expensive right. if you're just trading a couple pidgeys that's like pennies on the <laughs> pennies on the stardust dollar right is what it is well because everybody yeah there's there's probably 15 pidgeys in my room here with me and i don't even know it probably yeah, yeah exactly it's like uh they're the, the world is silly with pidgeys yeah it's stupid so wait a but, minute though uh, like do you um do you negotiate this or is it a set cost no oh, okay. no no it's a set cost <laughs> okay i was hoping you had to you had to like haggle that would be great barter like uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah no this gengar that got him it fell off the back of a truck <laughs> 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 yeah, I want to see you guys haggle like like uh, you know, it's like going to uh what's the Mexico town everyone goes to? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh See, uh, s- the one south s- of uh, s- the one with the donkey right, the one shows. One south of San Diego with the donkey, yes, donkey shows. Lots of donkey shows and it's called Tijuana. There we go. Tijuana. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> came a little slow to me, but anyway, all right, well that's interesting. I'm not in that world, of course. And now that, so since you're so close to the vine on all things Pokémon and the uh-huh. antic and all that. Uh-huh. That uh harry potter deal is yeah that, yeah is that out I've already, is it done is it not yet not out yet okay. but um they've already given you the opportunity if you've got a pokemon go account they've given you the opportunity to keep your name Ooh. so that you can be the same name in the harry potter game as you as you got in pokemon so no one can come in and snipe your you know snipe coverville for example mm-hmm. or i don't know if you had furt or frog pants or whatever you had in pokemon go i think frog pants is what i have in there yeah there you go if you want frog pants yeah. you better go to niantic's website and get your frog pants name in harry potter or else somebody else can steal that and represent you in the world of harry potter so i made a it's this... gonna be it's gonna be your yeah like uh they've got a hogwarts identity thief <laughs> So this this is not gonna so, this is not gonna surprise you. Polyjuice potion. Uh. Exactly. So this is not gonna surprise you though. 
No, no. But yesterday, since you're talking about names in video games, yesterday I started a. I'm, I'm reviewing a game called uh, Anno 1800, which is a, a city builder set in the year 1800. Mm. Oh, cool! It's very cool. Uh, it's made by Ubisoft. It's kind of a big release. Anyway, in that game, you can make your own character name uh, mm-hmm. to start out. It's kind of like the leader of your town or your city or whatever. Sure. And uh, I don't ever go with the default or something random. I always make something right. up. And yesterday, yeah. I would like to celebrate the birth of the following name. His name is and will forever be Wilfredson Long Penis. <laughs> and penis is not spelled properly because they won't let you in the game. It says be sure. appropriate when yeah. you're oh, blah, blah, blah. Well, Tell me how you spelled it. P E N U S. Penis. So that's his name. Wolfredson Long Penis. Wolfredson Long Penis. Yeah, before that, it was Fart Juggler McPhee was my other save. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Fart Juggler McPhee is like an open, like a sandbox character. And then this other guy is the campaign. And but please tell me you spelled Fart Juggler with a P-H-A-R-T. I didn't because it let me do it without changing Phineas, it. Phineas Fart Juggler. <laughs> <laughs> At your service. Now, in that other that game I play on Frog Pants Plays, which is today also, his name is Fart Pickler Jr., so I have a lot of fun with that, I'll, I'll, I'll say, yes. and I'm about 12 years old all the time. Anyway, thanks for the pizza, <laughs> thanks for the videos, and thanks for the CNBC swag. That was a really great day yesterday. It was like Christmas here at the uh, Johnson House. All right, one awesome. final thing. Yeah. A phone call at the top of the show. All right. I know okay, that's weird, good. but we're doing it. So here it is. This is a phone call. Here you go. Uh, this is Wes. Sometimes Wes words in the chat when I can be there. I don't know if you guys even do this, but I was throwing in my own recommendal for this week uh, for a show on Netflix called Kim's Convenience. It's a Canadian comedy about a Korean Canadian family that runs a convenience store, and it's fantastic. And the third season just dropped on Netflix, and uh, I just I think you guys would really like it. So anyway, have a wonderful day. Love the show, and um, talk to you later. Bye. Is there anything I've learned over the last couple of years? Canadian productions are way better than anyone gives them credit for. I love Shit's Creek. I love Trailer Park yeah. Boys. I love Letter Kenny. I mean, those last two are all are super focused on like a, on, a on certain Canadian kind of yeah, a very a certain yeah. kind of comedy. But uh, I laugh a lot at Canadian things, and so I am all about yeah. checking out Kim's Convenience. Yeah, I, I saw that on the front page of uh, of Hulu the other day, along with Doctor Pimple Popper. Pimple Which popper. I probably won't check out. Dr. Pimple Popper. Is that real? Doc, that's a real thing, Dr. Pimple Popper. <laughs> Ew. I'm not checking I'm that out at all. I'm not going near that. No, but I will check out Kim's Convenience. Okay, do that. And uh, I will do it at my convenience, not my wife Kim's Convenience. But I will watch Kim, Kim's Convenience. The Korean, cool. the Korean kind of Kim. Well, yes. Right. Or as we say in my household growing up, Korean. Oh, no. Korean. Okay. No, no, no. I wasn't going to go that other way. That you thought. <laughs> I was... That you couldn't see it on camera, but I was, I was gripping my desk, you're white like, knuckle grip. <laughs> like, oh, here it comes! You're like Gene on a Bob's Burgers episode that yeah, I saw the other day, where he's he's getting attacked by snowballs or something, and he goes, yeah. "Can someone please tell me why my penis has moved inside my own body or something like that?" <laughs> I was laughing so hard. Oh my gosh, Bob's Burgers is funny. We're still on this kick. It's on every night now in this house. We're just watching Bob's Burgers. That's cool. It is. That's very cool. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. All right. Wow, that was a lot of stuff. Yes, that's all right. You know, top of the show. We've got a lot of a lot of stuff to cover. Yeah. We've <laughs> covered drinking. We've covered getting impaled by the stratosphere. We've covered pizza sausage discs. A lot mm-hmm. of stuff has been covered here, and, and I feel better for it. Probably all the titles we'll ever need are uh, yeah, already done. Yeah, I think done. so, yeah. For I think so. Well, we let's... could stop now and still have... Four pages of titles to scroll scroll through. We haven't even gotten to Spaghetti Man. This is also true. Oh, my gosh. By the way. Okay, I do have to play one more thing. Sorry. I forgot about this. Somebody, the guy that did our, uh, excuse me, Fizzwig TIE Fighter thing. Yes. Oh, this this is great. This is so good. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I got to find it, though. It's in the You know, you got to be careful how much of this you play because this is a YouTube... uh, Cease and desist, just waiting to have oh, for sure. Blockage yeah, I, can, just, I can feel it coming, honestly, uh, already without having to even do anything. Yeah, the hell you got to get to when your lyrics start because it's there's uh, um, where's the video? What oh man, Twitter, you're broken. All right, let me try it again. Here we go. All right, uh, let's see. 
No. A little a little tear just went down Twitter's cheek. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> um No, it's still not here. What's the deal? Why is that not showing up with my tweet and retweets? What? How is this possible? Hold on. My takeaway. Seriously, Twitter, what are you doing? Oh, here it is. Okay, I found it. All right, I'm going to play this. So, okay. you know what, chat room? I probably should give you the visual as well. Well, no, I'll just play it. Here we go. Okay, you'll, you'll recognize the beginning of this, this video here, I think. And then the rest of it will make sense as we go here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> got a black guy in the car <laughs> I don't even remember hearing that the first time <laughs> I don't even know man <laughs> <laughs> it's, an, it's the guy who did fizz gig let me give you uh, his name on twitter oh, is yeah. x height sprod yes. x he height so, sprod he, he, I want him to do more of these I want to like you know <laughs> Oh my god, this is so good. I mean, we do fake lyrics to songs all the time. There are stuff we yeah. don't remember. He would, he would, <laughs> he would be doing us all a great favor if he kept doing more of these. Oh, is that yes. him, Chad I, the Drone Guy? Is that you? Okay, I think it's Chad the Drone Guy. That's oh, really? In the chat, yeah. Is it? Oh, that's yeah. There we go, Chad the Drone. Oh, it is Chad. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Because he said in one of his earlier tweets that this is Chad, by the way, or something. Oh, okay. Well, Chad, you killed it, dude. That was. <laughs> <laughs> it's too good. And oh, I, dude, Chad, you're the guy who brought the uh, drone to um, uh, Nertacular, like one of the first or second years we had it at Snowbird, right? Wait, is he that Chad? I think Chad? so. Different Chad, same Chad. Oh, different nope, Chad? not okay, him. Different Def Chad, not him. Never mind. I mean, it may Chad. not even be a Chad, but I know who you mean. Maybe this this is actually a Chad that's being operated by a guy in Schenectady, New York. Yes, he's a hanging <laughs> Chad. We know him. He's a, he's a drone. Yeah. He's being operated by someone remotely. There you have it. All right. So that was fun. And we should do more of those, Chad. So uh, we'll try. I don't remember saying there's a, I got a black guy in my car. I don't remember saying that at all. <laughs> so so nice I, job capturing that. That must have just flown out of me like a freaking Tourette's <laughs> thing. Who knows? Yeah. All right. Time for this. This is your radio newscaster with another exclusive sensational summary of world and local events. It's the news brought to you by. Brought to you by lots of water. Uh, I drank a ton of water. And the doctor Good. said to, he's like, you need to drink more water. I said, okay. Yeah. Five servings of fruits and veggies. Yeah. Drink more water. Drink more water. Everything will be Less fine. Less Indian buffet. And I poop a lot. Or not poop. Pee a lot. Yeah. A lot yeah, of pee. Yeah. A lot of pee coming out of me right now. Not right now. Like this second. But like, er, <laughs> here's water here. Later I'll pee again. <laughs> anyway hey look at this a florida man story oh it's been a while it's been a while been a while uh florida man was shoveling spaghetti in his mouth at an olive garden and got arrested for it <laughs> thought shoveling this, thought this was a free this, country once you hear this yeah i mean i love this story i'm glad we're, we're, we're getting to we're it we're finally getting to it it's actually a couple days old now but a florida man was arrested in olive garden after police say he caused a drunken disturbance and was shoveling spaghetti into his mouth with his hands uh, bed, ben Paget, age 32, was arrested by police in Naples. Is that New York? Yes. Uh, Florida. Florida. Oh, Naples, sorry. Florida, Florida man. Yeah, duh. Uh, on April 7th, on charges of disorderly intoxication and uh, resisting an officer without violence, according to an arrest report. I didn't know that was a classification. I didn't know that either. I'm trying to think. So I guess this is no. No, I'm going to come with you. No, no I resist. I no. don't I'm okay, resisting, but me. I'm not fighting. Okay, not really. you got me. Yeah, you got <laughs> <laughs> all right you persuaded me it's like don't 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 take me and then put your arms behind you and you know. <laughs> talk me into it let's go the report said officers responded to this disturbance call at the restaurant found a shirtless pageant chowing down on the spaghetti he smelled like booze and was muttering obscenities uh <laughs> better get a bucket <laughs> i'm gonna throw up <laughs> f you how you doing, Mr. Creosote? Better. Better? <laughs> Better get a bucket. Better get a bucket. 
I still have PTSD from that scene. I love that. It's scene. so hard for me to watch. I can watch it now, but I, 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 I feel like I'm 11 again and I'm watching it for the first time, and it freaked me out when I first saw it. Mm. I just thought nobody, this, oh man, meaning of life in general was mm. so weird to me as a as a kid. Oh yeah, like the 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 naked roller skating ladies chasing the dude off the cliff and yep. the, uh, yep. every sperm is sacred and oh they, yeah wait were they in roller skate skates i don't remember they were on that. roller skates i don't remember that chasing um uh michael palin, michael palin off the cliff yeah at the yeah. very end i didn't remember the roller skates what's wrong with my memory well you know granted there were other things on screen besides <laughs> roller skates that you're probably looking at i guess so i thought they just straight up chased him on foot because they had helmets and stuff. Yeah, I remember the helmets. A couple of them had helmets. Or did they? Chat room. Wait. Chat room says no, it was Oh, Graham they're saying Chapman. it's Graham Chapman. They were naked. Yeah, but were they in on rollers? Oh, now I got to know. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the video right now. Oh, it's going to bug me if, they're, if I don't oh, here know. Here we go. Oh, no, they're not. They're wearing knee pads and uh, helmets and elbow pads, but not on roller skates. Oh, no! Nope. Well, why are they wearing all those other things? In case they fall down, Scott. <laughs> Wait! Don't give me the most logical answer. Um, yeah, I, I know it's a total Mandela <laughs> effect. Of me remembering roller skates, but apparently they didn't have any roller skates. I'm sure all the other gear is what you're remembering, and it probably just seemed natural. I think so. Yeah, because that's all the stuff that I wear, and it is Graham Chapman. It's definitely not. Oh, and they are wearing bikini bottoms. Yeah, and you and I were both sure that it was. Uh, Michael Palin, though I was sure it was Palin yeah. until you guys yeah. all said that. Well, whatever. We remember things differently. <laughs> I do remember it was Terry Jones as the fat barfy guy, and it was yes. um, uh, John Cleese was the waiter, mm -hmm. and one of his helper waiters was Terry Gilliam, who didn't say much, right? Because he rarely did. Those things I remember, because sure. that scene is burned and into my mind. Where's the fish? Yes, fishy, 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 fishy fish. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. I don't know what it is about that movie, but yeah, I think it, it was so jarring as one of the weirdest things that I'd ever seen as a kid because yeah. I saw it in the theaters with my dad. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's a weird went. thing to watch with your dad. Wherever I would go. Oh my gosh, that's a great scene. That fish yeah. thing is freaking great. And I, I still don't know what it's for or what it means. No, I me neither. No. Yeah. Doesn't well, anyway. This guy was jamming food in his face, swearing. Restaurant worker told Paget caused a scene inside the restaurant and had to ask patrons for money outside and yelling uh, uh, expletives. Officers gave him a paper towel to clean up the pasta on his face, and he was taken into custody. <laughs> like, uh, not even using a fork and knife, just with his hands, yeah, like... Just blah, 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 blah. Blah. <laughs> and of course, once they got him in the police uh, car, he started banging his head against that metal cage thing. Cut his head, according to police. Oh, really? Yeah. Jeez. It was released on $2,000 bond and uh, as a waiting trial. So there you go. Burger King in the news. Yes. Haven't been to Burger King in a while, so this will be good. Burger King apologized for blatantly ignorant ad in which people eat burgers with chopsticks. Actually, I actually have some questions about this that are... Mm -hmm. I, I, I question is whether this is that big of a deal, but... Right. Anyway, Burger King, Burger King is facing heat over an advertisement in New Zealand that shows diners attempting to chow down on burgers using oversized chopsticks. Uh, the ad for the chain's new Vietnam, uh, Vietnamese sweet chili tender crisp burger. I wonder if they'll get what's his name to sing that. Probably not. <laughs> Darius Rucker. Yeah. <laughs> the Vietnamese yeah. sweet chili tender chili crisp tender. sweet chili Vietnamese burger. <laughs> <laughs> Um, went viral this weekend after Maria Mo, a Korean New Zealander, shared her thought on Twitter after viewing the ad on Instagram. Uh, she says, so this is the new Burger King ad with a Vietnamese, Vietnamese, Vietnamese burger. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Chopsticks are hilarious, right? OMG, etc. Upside down smiley face six times. Uh, <laughs> really, though, is this racist yeah. and bigoted? Is it, though? Because you're talking about eating utensils that just happened to be prominent in China. They weren't, or in Asia, they didn't go, I don't think anybody in the, I saw the Burger King ad. Nobody's going, oh, I got the chat. They don't do the right, whole thing. Exactly, yes. They just try exactly. to eat a burger which doesn't work. 
It looks like a it looks like a uh, uh, a, a challenge on that uh, Joe Rogan show. Fear Factor. It looks like <laughs> kind of yeah. Like yeah, a, a, a big what brother challenge do, or an amazing race challenge. Or you're something. gonna eat a whole burger with nothing but chopsticks after this break. Yes. It'll be like that. That's so you don't think that her comparison, so she says, I'm so sick of racism, racism of any kind, of the kind that makes fun of different cultures, to the kind that shoots and murders those peacefully praying in their place of worship. No. Wow. Uh, equal comparison, you think, maybe? Well, uh, she's given a range, I guess, but it says, say no to every single manifestation of it, she wrote. I, I, mm. All right, look. You know, when, when Mr. Pitts was eating that Snickers bar with a knife and fork, they were making fun of the elderly, and that's not funny. <laughs> Except when it is. Yeah. I think there are other things worth your time to be upset about and enraged yes. about. This probably isn't Sorry. one of them. I mean, I listen, I'm certainly not Asian. I don't even think I can have any sort of opinion just because I grew up with a diverse bunch of Koreans in my house. So mm -hmm. even then, if, if somebody out there of Korean or Asian descent of any kind wants to weigh in on this, I'd love to hear your reasons, and I would be totally open to them. But on the surface of this, this seems ridiculous it me. does it's uh, mountain molehill yeah hey mountain meet <laughs> yeah. molehill yeah zalek says yeah if an ad in japan showed people eating with a knife and fork would that be racist to americans no but then i Western. but i also understand there's a power differential and i understand that so i, I know it's not exactly a, yes, a one for right. one it's comparison white privilege, uh, yes right so i get all that stuff but i just all i'm saying is in this particular case you're talking about utensils and it just seems silly Mm -hmm. Nobody's going, ha, those Asians with their dumb way of eating. Right. Rrr. Yeah, exactly. I love I love a pair of chopsticks for almost anything. I mm -hmm. I almost prefer them. I grew up learning. I learned how to do it when I was like seven. And then I... Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, that got dark. Uh, <laughs> who's angry about the city? And I don't know. This lady and then a bunch of other people are now bat mad. Someone... Someone who uh, goes by the name Mariah M O Carey, yeah, on uh, on Twitter or on uh, what Instagram or where would she post this? Twitter. Uh, Twitter. Oh, is that really her name? No, I don't think it really is. Oh. I think it's Mariah Mo, but she added the Carey in case I don't know. People might think, oh, that must be Mariah Carey. Oh, maybe she's getting a lot of traffic for this. Hmm, maybe that's her motivation. Hmm. I don't know, or I have no idea. Uh, here's another one we've been putting off. Have you right. heard of you heard of the microblading process? You heard of that? Um, I've heard the term, and this is like a, like a really thin shaving thing. It's like when people put uh, stripes in their beards or mustaches or eyebrows or things like that. Is that that is close? Yeah, you're almost right okay. there. I'd never heard of it before this article, so this was educational for me. But there was a botched microblading procedure they're calling it that left a Missouri woman with four eyebrows. Oh, oh four brows, she says. They're uh, awful brows. A, a Missouri woman, uh, maybe you should call her mis uh, Misery Woman. For misery now. Woman. Yeah. <laughs> Is reminding everyone to research before cosmetic procedures after a mic microblading session went terribly wrong. Last November, the 42-year-old Jamie Ledbetter uh, decided she wanted to get fuller eyebrows. She went to visit a woman who claimed to be a certified person in microblading a beauty technique that involves tattooing someone's eyebrows on. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. A small handheld tool made of several tiny needles is used to add semi-permanent pigment to the skin. Oh, yeah, no, that's all right. No, thanks. Yeah, it doesn't sound fun. I mean, look, if I was an alopecia person, you know, with no hair, uh, I, maybe I'd do this. Yeah. Uh, like uh, Hank on, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. on, uh, on Barry. Hank's got no eyebrows. <laughs> I love Hank. I love Hank. Hank is my favorite television character <laughs> ever, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. I've been watching Your that. Your greatest hit, man, no? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think that season two could be as good as it is. It's so good. Oh, I have not seen any of season two oh, yet. Oh, Brian. I, it's I, not. I, you know how you worry maybe, about a show? It's like, oh, here comes sophomore season. Can they keep it I up or not? I kind of do. Yeah. It's That's what I was so holding good. me back, though. I want to finish The Deuce before I start uh, Barry. Barry's so I've got, so like, good. four episodes left of The Deuce. Well, I... <laughs> I've got, I've got four deuces left. Yeah, four deuces left. Okay. Hey, but seriously, when you get to it, I'm happy to report it's maybe better this season. It's so good. Oh, good. And good. Hank is so good. Yeah, that guy, uh, he also played, uh, is it Zax? What's the name of the um, the uh, Gotham, the Batman villain that carves? Oh, 
he was in that he was in the Arkham Asylum game, but he's um Oh, I know who you mean. I can't think of his name either. Dr. Zaz. Dr. Zaz. Zaz? Zaz? Yes. Yes, Dr. Zaz. Zaz. Does he have no hair? Um, Is he like an alopecia person? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you call a oh, Victor Zaz, <laughs> not Dr. Zaz. I don't think you call them alopecia person. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> a, suffer, a sufferer of alopecia, I guess. I'm gonna look and see. Oh, he might be because uh, because he's really yeah, he selling it. Any, it's really working. He doesn't for have him. any hair. He does. He actually uh, he was diagnosed age three with the autoimmune disease alopecia areata, which causes baldness. That's he awesome. Goes by the, he appreciates the phrase alopecia person when referring to him. Uh. <laughs> It's almost like you threw that part in and made it up. Almost, almost like that. Yes. <clears throat> but wait, so okay, that's interesting. Anthony Anthony Kerrigan is his name, and he played uh, not only has he played Doctor Zaz or Victor Zaz, but he also played Kyle Nimbus, aka the Mist, on the on the Flash. Oh, okay. He's he's got a, a great of, uh, head and face for all that stuff. He does. He should yeah. have been and in. He could be in a Mad Max sequel. You just paint him. His up. delivery is just absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Here's what I like about his role. <laughs> the other night, this show is so good at this. There's mm -hmm. this moment of kind of real dark dialogue, and you know the show's dark. It can, can mm -hmm. be. Yeah, especially got uh, got dark at the end of the first season. It really did. Although it well, took a turn. You got to watch the first part, and I think maybe you'll. Well, anyway. I don't want to give anything okay. away, but All right. okay. there's this. But there is this scene where he's talking to Barry, and it's very serious. And you're supposed to be taking it serious, and even the music is taking it serious. And then he gets into his car to leave, and when he turns it on, it's like Barbie Girl or some terrible. <laughs> and you only hear it through, you know, how a car sounds when you're not in it, but someone's got it yes, turned up really the, loud through the windows, basically, like through the. Yeah. yeah, you just can't take him seriously. It's like Hank can't be serious. Like he can't. <laughs> he tries to be. He'd be like, Barry, I'm very serious about this or whatever. It gets in the car, <laughs> and it just takes off. He's the best. Oh my gosh, he's the he's best. The best. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this lady, uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> Microblade, yes, oh yes. Uh, she says, it looks like I was just really surprised. She says, the outcome killed her confidence and makeup couldn't cover the unprofessional job. It was, uh, or says, I was devastated. I was even dating a, oh, here's my least favorite line. I was even dating a guy and he stopped dating me at that point, she says. <laughs> you need Aww. to date better dudes. It sounds like a douchebag. Yeah, bag. exactly. Yeah, that's and also it's fixable. It takes a while, but you can oh, fix it. Oh man, yeah, they really did a crap job on it. Though. It's bad, right? Yeah, it's well, like it feels like a joke. Like it does. Like like you did it with uh, a fine point sharpie, not the thick thick sharpie, but like a little fine point sharpie, and just didn't do enough lines to make eyebrows. Yep. Here, chat, and we'll show you this screen. There you go. Oh, there's video, I guess. Um, I wanted to just show her. I don't know if it's the fact that her eyebrows make her look surprised or the still frame that they have on here where she's got her eyes wide open and her pupils are super tiny because she's looking in a flash. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. The lead better face. It might help, it. Her, help her also. Uh... <laughs> All right, there she is. See that over there on the the right, you guys? Look at that. That's how it split, so it almost looks like she I got I couldn't date her anymore, Alleg. She had no eyebrows. <laughs> she looked like a circus clown. She always looked surprised. I couldn't tell. I was always saying, what are you so surprised about? <laughs> this is totally something Jerry would do. It totally is, yeah. Oh, there they are, split into four. Yeah, that's a pretty bad job, especially the one on the left. <laughs> it really is, yeah. Uh, apparently she <laughs> she has had now a procedure to get it cleared out and it's all good now. She had four eyebrows. She was a quadro brow. <laughs> Thank you, Bama Born eighty one. A quadro brow. A quadro brow. That's pretty good. All right. Um, <laughs> final uh, note here. Final story. Okay. Um, a man received prison sentence for shooting at fireflies he thought were alien lasers. Well, sure. Yeah. Jesse Shields of uh, Pennsylvania. That's where all the vampire, American vampires are. A couple, couple are. Martians sitting there with uh, green laser pointers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's, let's see. Uh, was high on bath salts, of course, back in June when he fired a handgun into the sky. Uh, he says the alien lasers he shot were actually fireflies. Fearing they were being chased, Shields and a woman, Catherine McCloskey. Mm -hmm. uh, ran to a nearby home where the homeowner got a gun uh, f or got the gun from them and called 911. Jeez. 
Uh, Shields then allegedly asked if the homeowner or asked the homeowner if he could take a shower to get the goo off of him that was burning his skin. Yeah. Can I use your shower to get this? <laughs> no. Nope. Dude, don't do bath salts, man. <laughs> it seems like you should know. Everyone should know now. Bath salts are bad. Don't take them. Yeah, no kidding. You're going to go bonker wacko. Can I um, wash the goo off that's burning my skin in your bathroom, in your home? <laughs> nope. This gets him, uh, by the way, nets him six years in prison. Uh, he pled guilty last month after he calmed down, probably. And uh, that yeah. was guilty to the tri- crimes of criminal trespass and firearms without a license. She, the lady, pleaded guilty in November to a DUI, operating a vehicle under the influence of a controlled substance and disorderly conduct. She was sentenced to six days to six months in jail. Mm. So, not together, by the way. They will not be together in jail. Yeah, nope. Separate rooms. Keep them Keep them apart. Uh, together, they form uh, Revoltron. <laughs> 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 keep them separated. <laughs> oh, that's a funny idea. Revoltron. You want to use that for a cartoon? Yeah, I'm trying to think, Revoltron? How, I'd, trying to think yeah. how I'd do it. How would you? You'd have, uh, so it'd be Martin Shkreli. Uh, it would be like all these people who joined to form Revoltron. <laughs> Martin Shkreli. Uh, who else? Uh, Assange, maybe? I don't maybe. know. I'm trying to think of like who. Assange with his Letterman beard. I is... <laughs> can't think of anything else. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll tuck there's that one there's away. There's something there. Workshop this. There is something there. I'm going to tuck that one away for uh, for for more close, for a little workshopping. Uh, okay. We're going to take a break. When we come back, my sister, Wendy, the therapist, will be here. And we're going to discuss somebody's email that came in that we thought was a worthy uh, subject. And so we're going to do that. Uh, that'll be right after this song that Brian will play. Brian? Yes. How about CK? That sounds like I'm saying two letters, but I'm not. I'm saying the whole word. S-E-E-K-A-Y. Um, she is a performer from uh, New York City, it looks like. That's at least where this was produced by Arthur Pingray and mastered at Sir- Sterling Sound in New Jersey. Um, it's a, a very cool electronica down tempo, um, kind of, I don't know, Lord Bjork kind of sound to it. Mm. Uh, it's very cool. The song is, uh, um, not showing up on my screen. Why is it not showing up on my screen? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. There we go. Uh, this is the new single brand new, um, by CK. The song is called Hertz H U R T. Oh, not yes. like Hertz, not, like uh, not like uh, the 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 H E R T Z. Oh, okay. <laughs> not, the rental car company. not rental car. Not how many Hertz you're, uh, uh, or megahertz. Not like that. Exactly. Okay. No, no, not like that at all. Yes. All right. uh, this came out. Oh, I know. I do have the date. February twenty seventh. It just came out. So it's a little over a month and a half old. Couple months old. But mm. uh, love it. Here is Hertz by C K. Naturally, being proud of ourselves, we objected to being ordered about in an incompetent way. So, so, you kill them. Exactly. My husband has three testicles. What do I do? <laughs> this is the morning stream. We're doing it for Kowalski. All right, we're back, everybody. We're back. By the way, ah. I, have, I have a new uh, I have a reminder that goes off at like right at 11 a.m. It mm-hmm. says, and I never usually forget it. It's usually p.m. where I get screwed. But I to to make sure the songs are in for people that listen at home. And so oh, right. now I have an alarm that goes off and literally in all caps <laughs> says, don't forget the music, dummy. <laughs> nice. Because I've done it a couple of times. Right. Well, it's better than giving you a Twitter message that says that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Which I do. I get those too. Yes. But uh, yep. <laughs> trying to mitigate that a little bit. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause and see why Wendy's not online. Hold on a second. A little bit. Uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> trying. To, I think that's you. <laughs> And let's put it on repeat. <laughs> Here's another one. <laughs> oh. Ugh, that 
something you I'm want. I'm not sure I like that anymore. <laughs> you might not like that anymore. All right, let me... Here we go. All right, let's see where Wendy be at. Oh, Wendy, you there? Oh, hi. That was weird. Oh, that is weird. You were showing offline, but now you're not, and here you are. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not still hearing the ring, are you, or anything weird like that? No. Okay. No, it rang once and then stopped, so I thought maybe you guys were prank calling me. No. <laughs> well, at least the uh, the problem where it just kept ringing is gone, and instead now it just doesn't ring at all. So well done, uh, uh, Discord. <laughs> You've done it. Uh, it's Wendy, everybody. Here's her theme. The assumption is porn is, yeah, woo. All right, there you go. And uh, <laughs> she's... Uh, <laughs> She's with us oh again, uh, all the way from beautiful downtown, uh, I don't know, where are you? St. Paul, Minnesota. Where are you? Saint, definitely not downtown, but St. Paul is technically accurate. It yeah. is St. Paul. And it is beautiful. Okay. As every street, like, do you miss the grids of of your uh, city of your home birth? Uh, you know, it's pretty gritty here as far as that goes. Like, it's... Someone was saying something about that. I got I'm not familiar enough with the downtown area yet, but it's pretty it's gritty. Gritty. Pretty gritty. Yeah. It is not. Uh, it's complicated. I don't know if you've ever. I know Scott, you've been to the, the gritty south. streets of St. Paul. I mean, this, <laughs> the no. the southern. Oh, so I can say this: when I was in uh, just last year, I when we were in D, I know it's with a D. Yeah. <laughs> when we were when Kim and I were in Ohio, I noticed that you know they got this old way of doing roads, and everything's just kind of spaghetti. And the same thing yeah. with down in the south. It's all spaghetti, and every other road or street is called Martin Luther King something. So it's just well, really and they, confusing. they change. Like the same road will change names multiple times. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know how anyone has ever found anything. It's it is a little bit that way here, but definitely not. It's it's not it too bad. It feels more like a grid because because Salt Lake City is crazy that. about the grid. Like it's the grid is like the grid is almost religion here <laughs> it's like we they started out with like this perfect blocked out uh thing and now it all has numbers and then when people first hear of our roads they go what 300 south 400 west what the hell is that it's like coordinates it works really well once you get used to it but I yeah. was, I didn't... it's also like embarrassing how lost i used to get being there because no. i'd be like okay wait am i going south no. I'm like, it was this is just that's another johnson trait i'm so bad at it <laughs> like the, the compass in my head got put in backwards, so yeah. everything is backwards. I'm the same. Is it worse direction. at night, or is that just me? It's worse at night, right? I don't... I feel like it's always bad, so oh, I don't know. It's so much worse for me at night. And there was... I remember one time, my oh. sister Misha uh, is also terrible at directions of any kind. And her and I, one time, in my car, I can't remember where we were going, but we were probably high school. I, I can't remember. Um, I was like a senior, she was like a sophomore, and I was taking her somewhere, and it required that when we left, it was not, it was daytime, and when we came home, it was going to be nighttime. We got so lost, we had to ha call dad, he had to come out and get us, had to find us. <laughs> how bad, how dumb is that? Oh my gosh. It's literally a grid, just go to where your numbers are. Yeah. yeah I know. It's right. embarrassing. I know, it's really weird. Anyway, we have to poo before we go anywhere, and we get lost. We yeah so adam so i married like my exact opposite here he i can put him in a building in a city he's never been in the dark corner a closet in a building that isn't even on a map spin him around and say point to north and he can't and he can just do it freaky yeah i can't do it he feels it and i'm like you're an alien he feels the direction that's crazy oh yeah yeah that that's something something's wrong there. yeah <laughs> that's either really great or scary i don't know which i <laughs> yeah. which way i want to say a it. magnet somewhere in his head that's not supposed to be there I don't could know. be well, uh, as usual, or as usual, as is usual, as, as usual, that's the right word. Wendy's yeah, here. Yeah. It's Thursday. We uh, help people with uh, therapeutic questions because she's a therapist. She helps people all the time with real problems, and really, it's her job. But here she comes in and does a little freebie work for you people, and uh, we hope you appreciate it. I know that you do. But uh, I got one this week that was email form. I shared it with Wendy. She agreed that it might be a good one, so we're going to do it. I'm not going to use any names. We'll just call this person DC. And uh, here's the question. Wendy, are you ready? Yep. All right. The subject is Therapy Thursday, patching it up with the family later. Uh, his message goes like this. Recently, my son, who moved out while his stepmom and I were at work and left us both very hateful letters, left a noose on the car of a woman who told his girlfriend about him cheating on her. All the women, or sorry, all the wom women were friends initially saved the girlfriend. All right. So we're already into the thick of this here. Yeah, I'm already confused. Okay, it's a little confusing, but he basically he left horrible he he left home and left horrible letters for both of them, and then left a noose on the car of a 
And so this I'm woman told his girlfriend that he was cheating on her, but all the all the women that she said were cheating, he was cheating with were just friends. Yes, correct. Okay. And then he okay. says, I know how bad all this sounds, and trust me, I wish it stopped there. The day following, I went to the police. The girl who had the noose on her car and actually encouraged her to press charges, and or what? Anyway, and spoke with his mom and teenage sister. First, why encourage her to press charges? My son can be very scary, and I am genuinely worried he will hurt someone next. Second, my ex-wife and his teenage sister both harassed this young girl, begging and threatening to, to dox her. Not sure what begging her to do that is, but whatever. And we all know what doxing is, right, everybody? Everyone knows what doxing mm -hmm. is? Don't dox. It's not nice. Uh, I wanted her to do the right thing, to get help despite what was going on. This wasn't a joke as my ex-wife trying to write it off as. No, this was being a bully to the nth degree. My heart broke when I spoke to the detective, but just as I told him I will tell you, I am worried about not only what he would try to get away with in the future, but also someone getting hurt by him. All right. The day my son moved out about two months ago, he blocked me on all social media and changed his phone number. I had caught him in numerous lies and several thefts. Uh, for example, he took away a copy of Fallout 76 he stole from Redbox. That's kind of a problem with Redbox. Anyway, I know there is a lot to unpack here. The day I called the cops and did the right thing by trying to get him help and that young woman help and stop the bullying my oldest daughter was having uh, stopped having anything to do with me. My wife tells me she has a very rough patch with her mom, and it wasn't till her 40s, she's now 46, that her and her mom had any connection. Uh, is that where I am now, waiting 20 plus years for my son and daughter to come around, uh, for them to mature if they ever do? I am fighting a stream of depression over this, and my wife has encouraged me to seek a fam family therapist. I am just waiting for an opening in my area now. Thanks for taking the time to read my email, DC. So... Uh, a little confusing, but basically what it comes down to, uh, which I think is a more universal problem than, than some issues we bring up on the show, is a big falling out with a family member, and in this mm -hmm. case, one that involves... His son. But, yeah, potential violence, potential, you know, all that stuff. And, and not just a falling out, but also worried about what he might do, you know, and kind of wanting to protect him, but also wanting to protect the world from him kind of thing. Right. right? Is that... Right. Yeah. That is correct. And also, okay. it seems like, imagine, okay, I always think about this. Imagine what Jeffrey Dahmer's parents felt like mm -hmm. when, you know, they kind of knew he was a bit of a wackadoo growing up and, and things were weird and he was behaving strangely and all that other stuff. But then he moves out and you're just kind of always going, ah, oh, boy, I hope Jeffrey doesn't do anything weird. I hope Jeffrey's okay. I hope Jeffrey this and that. Then you find out he's one of the most notorious serial killers of all time and a cannibal and blah 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 like what are they left feeling are they left feeling like we didn't do enough and i'm not saying this emails like that but do you know what i mean like just that feeling of i'm mm -hmm. doing all i can and then if something really bad happens then you're going to have guilt forever that you didn't do right. enough even though you, you didn't did do anything yeah. yeah so sue klebold k-l-e-b-o-l-d gave a ted talk she's the mother of one of the columbine shooters mm. oh yeah dylan klebold's it's, mom yeah, yeah. which was it's coming up really, on the 20th anniversary too yeah, yeah. which is like it's this really week. amazing so this and week? she gives you a, a glimpse she mm -hmm. gives you a glimpse into that what her mindset has been over the years and how people have treated her and and what she's doing now and uh it's it's really amazing and and I, that's what i hear in the email that you know his he's trying to do the right things right he's he's um thinking of the the greater good and i'm guessing if this this is like an adult kid an older teenager 18 at least 19 maybe i don't mm -hmm. know he doesn't say um you know he's sort of there's not much you can do uh, at this stage, at, if this is who that kid is at this point, you know? Right. Um, but, you know, he could do the wrong thing. And I think the wrong thing would have been sort of just cowing to this kid and validating all his bad behavior and letting him sort there's just no consequence to any of this. And, you know, like that's the easy way. That's the way to preserve a relationship with a kid who's a bully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, he's probably an adult at this point. I can't. It's hard to know. He's not like 12, obviously, right? Right. Um, where there's still some influence that you can have. And it sounds like his 
mom is pretty, I don't know what her role is in all of this, but she's, I don't know, willing to back up the kid and his bad behavior, right? If he, she's also a bully herself, if she's also threatening people. Mm -hmm. So you cheat and then someone warns the girlfriend and then, you know, all the energy goes to let's demonize the person who uh, tattled on you basically did the right thing right yeah, so here's yeah. here's the theory or sort of the pattern is the, whoever does the right thing and this is what happens in kind of bully mentality is now we got to pick on that person so you know so in in essence dad has become ostracized because this is the method of how they kind of operate so it seems a little bit inevitable if he's going to do the right thing to make sure these kids are protected and that honesty is important or whatever. Right. So yeah, yeah. It, it, that sucks. Um, and he says, you know, it's interesting. Like, do I have to wait 20 years for us to repair it? Well, you, you might have to wait until your kid does grow up and wants a relationship. That's, that is something that maybe is out of your control. So you got to focus on what is in your control and that's, so go talk to someone about it is really important. Go do that. Mm. Um, because you got to work through this, these feelings and not let it ruin the rest of your life. Um, but it's tough. It's so tough. It's yeah. so tough to let go when, you know, it's your, been your life to try to raise a kid. And obviously it's a complicated circumstance, right? You've got an ex-wife and a new wife and another kid and influences that are out of your control and stuff that maybe you did wrong. I mean, parenting's hard, right? Yeah, oh, it is. And it hardest. doesn't end. It never ends. Like if you, uh, well, Wendy's aware of this, but in our family dynamic, our extended family dynamic, we have a member of the family who's kind of black sheep from the start and uh, rebelled real hard and was always doing things and up to things that nobody was sure of and just made mom and dad always wonder if, you know, what horrible news they were going to get in the middle of the night, every night, that sort of stuff. And sometimes those things don't work out till 20 years later when that person matures or they've learned enough or they've been to the bottom and have to come up, like whatever it is, like sometimes that's actually a good thing. In our case, there's a little of that, but there's also yeah. a little bit of the other still. And hmm. as far as my mom and the person I'm talking about, they, they have zero contact of any kind. So they still haven't. There's no resolution there. My mom's 80. She's not getting any younger. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't Do they have contact with you guys? Do they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it and and that again, that's been rocky in its own way, mm -hmm. but also in some ways like really a lot better than ever before. But then old habits and old wounds come out, and then it gets weird again. And like I guess I'm saying that for those who have the 20 year reunion and things are better, that's almost like a blessing in itself because yeah. that's, that's also kind of rare probably. Right. Cause these, these things, especially when you, you leave and you break all contact and you're basically making it impossible for that healing to take place. That stuff's really hard to heal 20 years later. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Like I've, the 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 help he needs it sounds like to me is to feel or to to find a way to understand that it's normal to worry about it and normal to have all these feelings about it and stuff but not let it destroy your life <laughs> I yeah don't, I don't, and that's why getting getting some help is really important because it'll help your brain not get stuck on i must have failed i regret i did it, everything wrong or maybe i can you know you could just torture yourself for mm -hmm. a long time and th th literally the best thing you can do for this relationship is um have sort of the, a healthy perspective on it and recognize that you know it's not over you know he's very young, very full of testosterone, very angry, and maybe he needs to go to jail for like, there's going to be consequences to, you know, th that are unrelated to you that will follow him and he's going to pay some prices. And that is hard as a parent to let happen. Um, and, you know, let natural consequences ultimately teach a kid a few things. Um, because up to this point, it's I can rebel against my parents. They're the they're the place where, um, 
you know, I can, I, I can have my angst against them and I can kick against them. And as soon as they release themselves of that, which it sounds like he has, you know, he's still going to behave in the way he is. And the consequences for that in his life will, will accumulate like they do for all of us. And there's, there's so little we can actually do about that. Now, that's easy to say. And then the actual practice of letting go, moving on, being healthy, making sure your marriage is good and your, your real life is, is what you need it to be. That's going to take some work and some, I don't know, I want to say mental gymnastics a little bit to try to carve out a space where you can still be sad and grieve the loss of what you thought would be and, and yet be really open to what will be in, in maybe 20 years, maybe five. You never yeah, know. You don't know. Plus, you know, there's going to be a temptation on your part, I think, uh, if let's say 10 years goes by and then reconciliation might might be possible. Um, you're going to be tempted to be in a kind of I told you so mode. And you want to resist that, I think. Um, I think part of the reason the person that we talked about earlier in our family that struggles with that can't seem to make that reconnection with mom is two things. One mom is in, I told you so modes a lot of times. And the other because person, she wants to be right about, she has been right about it. all. She of, has been from wants, day one. She wants and the she, credit. Exactly. She wants to, the, the credit for look like I've been telling you all for 35 years. Look, look, it's obvious now, you know, like, yes, she wants that satisfaction. And at the same time, the other person is unwilling to ever admit that she was right the whole time. And that can get in the freaking way, man. Like that thing's yeah. a big old wedge. Just like you're never going to get, you, if you can't get past that thing, that part of it, one of the two parties has to, you know, preferably the one, the offending party, but, um, you know, they just have to let that part go and, and not, it's not a competition. It's not a whatever. And in this particular case, I mean, I don't know what all the history is leading up to this severance, but, um, you know, same thing applies. You're going to be tempted to want to say, well, if you're to listen to me, you know, and you don't want to, you don't want to do that because then you're making it about you. And I don't know, that stuff just doesn't freaking help. Well, mm. and you struggle with, I mean, you take a kid who's going to put a noose on somebody's car. That's crazy. And, and you're thinking that's the offspring I brought into the world. Like that's, that's a painful thing to think about. Um, how, in case you're going to wonder, did I do this wrong? Or if we hadn't have gotten divorced or, it, you know, whatever the questions may be around that. But, you know, that that's a kid full of anger. And that's a kid who needs some help at some point and hopefully can find it. It doesn't sound like that any of that is in your hands. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, sort of reconciling the reality of of things, like an honest look at what has happened in his life and your role in that and your not role in that. Because... Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer had some pretty bad stuff happen to him. Mm -hmm. um, but lots of kids have bad stuff happen to him. Sometimes it, it, it's kind of the nurture and nature in combination. And I think epigenetics sometimes is a role where your experiences mm -hmm. unleash a part of you that, you know, so who knows? It's his own journey. And that's so hard as parents. We have, we're so attached to their outcome as a, as a validation of us mm -hmm. because it's logical, right? It just seems to be connected. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, everyone is an individual making decisions, and we, we have to find some healthy boundaries there, or it'll, it'll mess the rest of your life up. And that's, we don't want that either. Yeah. Well, uh, do seek the help you're looking for. It sounds like he's on the right track there. Uh, speaking of boundaries, I thought it'd be a good time to follow up on, um, was it two weeks ago? Anyway, Brian, the person you're familiar with that we talked about the question about uh, coworker. Clash. Yeah, yeah. The narcissism yeah. question we had last any, week. Any any yeah. update on that? Any uh, growth or better betterment happening there? Or um, no? Yeah, they reached out to me uh, with a follow up. I mean, basically, um, they worked with their uh, their management team, who's who's been on their side the whole time and knows that this person can be difficult, mm. and basically taken away this person's accesses that they were. Uh, taking advantage of accesses that they probably shouldn't have had in the first place and basically saying, yep, okay, you don't have access to do this or this or this anymore, which was part of the, uh, um, uh, not, uh, what's the, what's the word when you, uh, 
as an employer, an employee, you take too much advantage of the situation. Uh, insubordination. <laughs> uh, there was some insubordination going on with that. Mm. Um, and uh, um, since then, this person has been very quiet, mm. which makes which makes our emailer very nervous. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're they're you know they're aware and that's you know at least that's kind of the thing it's like all right well i know what's i know what you're capable of i'm not gonna uh trust you and i'm gonna kind of sleep with one eye open kind of thing yeah Mm -hmm. interesting okay well Well, and smart to get everyone sort of involved and it sounds yeah yeah, that is you just cannot do that alone that's why marriage to a narcissist is probably one of the most terrifying untreated let's be clear oh God, you can yeah. get help with this but mm-hmm. just because you're you're very alone dealing with it and it's that's the most dangerous place to be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right well that's at least feels like forward movement um yeah. i hope that i hope that continues to improve yeah hope so i'll keep uh <laughs> i'll keep stuff uh keep posted here as 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 uh as the situation develops yeah. we'll be right here to give you the update as the kids say keep us abreast will you <laughs> do they say that they do those kids they're <laughs> the really kids, they're, the kids say that yeah even though apparently sex is down among teenagers like less mm. interesting to teenagers these days you hear about all these studies wendy what's that what's oh, that about yeah. that's pretty crazy i know exactly what it's about it's called you get dopamine through your phone anytime you want all day and through video games and movies and anything you want at any time which is dopamine, like it has its limits and its use and sex is driven by dopamine mm. and it, that's it's interesting not, yeah. You hear that? Video games are killing <laughs> sex too. They are. Well, maybe people are less violent due to video games. Right. Yay, but are mm-hmm. they? And they're not out on the street actually getting in trouble in the same way, right? right. But they definitely are having less sex. So. All too right. Bad for them. And then also equally important. Um, I don't know if I've ever shown this while Wendy was on the air, but when she went to Jerusalem and st- studied abroad, which was not studying a single lady, which then we <sighs> called broads. But like, like <laughs> when, you know, abroad, like, you old. know, yeah. anyway, yes. uh, she brought home this, this, oh, uh, rip off yarmulke. Yeah. <laughs> the Simpsons yarmulke, which is obviously not official in any right. possible no, way. No, you can totally tell it was. Somebody <laughs> made like Marge's hair is way too short and there's all kinds of things, but it You're is one high, of my, it. eat my matzah. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite things ever. And Carter just handed it to me and reminded me that it exists. So I'm just going to put this on for the remainder of the show. Or does that mean, to, is this bad for, like, uh, is this saying oh, to do watch it? out that uh, Mariah Mo Carey uh, Twitter account is going to oh, say, no. you know, all right, maybe I won't oh, yes. it. Making fun of Jews is hilarious. OMG. Uh, <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I don't think um, I'll wear it. Down, happy face. Yeah, happy face, smiley face. Uh, all right. Well, Wendy, uh, as always, enlightening information today. Uh, don't have a kiddish man yeah no kidding and you're gonna go to you'll be in vegas you're gonna be able to say hi to people and stuff that's gonna be awesome yeah um we're 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 toting misha up there and uh you guys gonna get some rad sister time yeah yeah which is cool and it's gonna be exciting i'm glad you're getting away too you probably deserve a little bit of a a break from the kiddos i'm scared the sun came out the other day and it was really warm I'm going to die in Vegas. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more of that. There yeah. is. And, you know, five minutes on my porch uh, is, is not a good indication I'm going to do well. Well, here's um, the good thing. All the fun stuff in Vegas is inside. Right. <laughs> right. On purpose. It probably. totally is. You don't even have to set foot outside if you don't want to. Uh, the important like thing outside. The important thing is it's going to be 80. And that's pretty good. That's not so hot, you know, like it's yeah. not going to kill you. Pleasant. It's perfect. Yeah. So oh, I can't wait to get some pool time. Pool time. Yeah, and that's the beauty of this event is there's plenty of things like pool time. You guys should just chill, mm-hmm. relax, mm-hmm. read, come to the things at night or in the afternoons when they happen, whatever. Mm-hmm. Speaking mm-hmm. of, what do I need to do? Oh yeah, we probably oh, should uh, see. We'll if, get you a, get you a list. Yeah. <laughs> give me a list. Not really a list of things to do, but we'll we'll give you a list of everything that's happening, and then and you can, you can do what whatever you, you want. Do. Yeah, and then if we yeah. and if you are down for it. I mean, there are going to be opportunities for, hey, when do you come up here for a second? Let's talk a bit, bit, bit. You know, like we're going to be able to have some fun that way. So, but again, okay. super chill, super easy, nothing crazy. Okay. Just awesome. yes. good food, chilling out. You know, I friends. can't wait till you can give some uh, relationship advice to Widowmaker. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, yeah during Hover Pants. That's yeah, that'd be, be great. Nice. She's a video game character. Uh, she's she's blue. Um, uh-huh. That's her color, and she mm-hmm. shoots people Which from far away. Which is part of the problem. Yeah, that's, oh, that's part the, of the other problem. part of the problem right there. Yeah, yeah. kids don't want to have sex anymore because they're obsessed with uh... <laughs> daddy issues. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Anyway, uh, I look forward to it. But between now and, now and then, have a great week. And uh, let's do this again real soon. Okay. Bye, Wendy and Dunford. Bye, oh, by the way, Wendy Dunford on Twitter. Or, or sorry, Instagram. I don't know what her Twitter is. It's something else. Yeah, forget it. Therapy right. Thursdays on Twitter, isn't it? Is that it? Therapy sure. Thursdays? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, something yeah, like maybe. that. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, eat well and we'll see you later. <laughs> well, I told her to eat well. Hey, the Mueller report is out, you know. That's been happening all yes. while we were on the air Mueller? here. Mueller? Yeah. Mueller. Mueller. <laughs> Mueller. <laughs> Mueller. Um, boy, there's some interesting bits in here. I'm going to have to read this after. All right. Mm. Uh, Did you go to Barnes & Noble and download it for free? <laughs> no, but I heard you could. That's true, right? Yeah, that's where you can go get it. You can download it for free at Barnes & Noble. Oh, that's great. Com. That's pretty cool yeah. that they're doing that. You can look at it on your Nook tablet. Fantastic. <laughs> well, those just do... I think they just do ebook format, The or what's it called? Um... EPUB, EPUB format, I think. Yeah. yeah, so you could pull that into anything, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here is a couple of quick rapid-fire emails. Josh Espinoza wrote in, and he said this, clearly I'm a week or so behind. While I agree with you, five guys are superior to JCWs, I haven't, uh, sorry, I haven't typically had What's, a terrible experience. Oh, JCW is the place, sorry to interrupt, it's the place that uh, you had you've got there right yeah like, that and, everyone thinks is this great local place and i think it's not okay. great it's kind of gross mm-hmm. okay he says i wonder Sorry. if your uh, local jcw just isn't as good as some of the others well this one's brand new like they just opened they should be better than this but anyway my only real complaint about five guys is my burger always comes smashed and a mess which means you have to try to put the burger down uh, and i end up with a soggy mm-hmm. mess a delicious soggy mess that's the key though it's so good it is, yeah. That is the problem too. It's like uh, I get that with the um, the red robin bonsai. It's like I'll, I have to keep holding it because if I set it down, it becomes a fork knife and fork burger. <laughs> mm-hmm. It kind of does. Oh, it's so yeah. good though. I want one now. Um, it says picking from those places though. I would go Five Guys, then In and Out, then Culver's, then JCW, then Burger King, then McDonald's, then Wendy's. So that's his hmm. list. Where's uh, Freddy's in this in this mix? I would put Freddy's at the front personally but uh josh go to freddy's dude it's so yeah. good freddy's and i think culver's so culver's is uh gets gets a little higher placement it should anyway like uh mm-hmm. they've got their butter burgers really good really good carter what was that burger place you were talking about the earlier you're saying mom should get the veggie burger there Ab- avenues proper apparently that it's up by the university but apparently that is like the bomb best burgers in town so, okay, pops and recline. Pro tip: yeah. cut the burger in half, which I do. Which I do with I do that with the bonsai is that I cut it in half. Yeah. But he says set it down on the cut face, so like the the piece you're not oh. eating, you put oh. it on the cut face. Doesn't it? Doesn't it flop open? Yeah. Wouldn't it just go bleh? Wouldn't it just go bleh? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I'm interesting. Oh, burger fi. Yeah, we've got those out here, and I've had one. I've and Lark Burger good. is another one we have out here that's really good. I've heard Burger Fi is good. Tommy Burger is good. I can't even. I can't tell you the last time I actually had a burger burger. Oh. By the way, I found out that Impossible Meat, yeah, uh, which is sweeping the nation, Scott. Yeah. Like um, <laughs> sweeping. Yeah, colors. Red Robin has uh, Matt Bat Home. Matt Be at Home says Red Robin has it. Um, Qdoba is getting Impossible Meat. Here's the thing: it's more points than actual meat. In Weight Watchers terms, it is because Why? of all the potato in it. Because oh, of all the potato, because it's made of uh, potato it's starch. Like, it's starch and proteins instead of just uh, proteins. And gotcha. So it's like, oh, oh we just eat a regular burger then. <laughs> I'll just eat a regular burger, which I should. Yeah, you really should get one of those. Get one, just drive one of those into your head later today. Right. Exactly. Here's well, one. I'm getting, I'm getting sushi for lunch. Is what I'm doing. Oh, well, that's even better. Uh, Renee A wrote in says, hey, mm-hmm. Scott, just to let you know, I received my three tea packets from upgrading to the tea level on Patreon, which is something people can totally do. And I just want to let you know that they are all amazing. I want uh, wasn't a fan of smelling them at first, but when they're brewed, they are delicious. Mm. Looking forward to more. Also, thank you for throwing in the coffee beans on the shipment. I love your shows. Even the screaming on Outlast 2 streams, those were hilarious, but my ears are hurting. Best regards, <laughs> Renee. Uh, yeah, that's just a good reminder that they we have this tea level for... Um, 
for the yeah, TMS for Patreon. Patreon. And it's awesome. People like it. Uh, it's all from the Phoenix Pearl Tea Shop in Montana. It is it is a deal. It's a silly deal that you should take advantage of because we've marked it too low. It's too low and it's you get low. all that tea and it's everything must go. We, we're crazy. Yeah. Best night's sleep I had this week was two nights ago and I took a or I drank before bed a sleepy time oh. thing that she recommended and it yes. knocked me out, man. Caramel so good. uh yes. walnut. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget about that and I need to do some of that to help me sleep too. It I had a hard time sleeping up. last night. Me too. I'm gonna go back to drinking that tea tonight. That's on my yeah. that's on my do. Oh, can we can we take a second and address I've gotten a bunch of emails or actually uh, Facebook links on this one. All right. So Carl's Jr. this weekend hmm. has a the Rocky Mountain High Burger. Okay. It is only going to be available one day at one Colorado restaurant until they run out. So Saturday morning, 420, dude, is uh, when this thing starts. It is a burger that is infused with a sauce. So it's got like um, waffle fries, burger, um, maybe lettuce, tomato. Uh, I should look this back up here. Carl's, I'm sure it's like, hey, here we go. There's a photo of it. Um uh, all right, so two patties, two slices of cheese, jalapeno slices. I can't tell if they're pickled jalapeno slices, but then a sauce that is infused with uh, CBD. Mm. Mm. And it's just until they run out. It's a it's uh, a Carl's Jr. that would be about a 30-minute drive for me, and they're <laughs> oh, going to start selling them at 6 a.m. until they run out. <laughs> Jeez. Really? Yes. They're going to be gone not by... Even, not even at lunch. I know. So I'm wondering, A, should I do this? Yeah. <laughs> for science. I mean, yes, because the show would benefit from it, but... The show would benefit yeah. from it. This means I would basically get up, go get a burger, come home. I'd have to eat it while it's hot, of course. Yeah. And then um, and then do film sack immediately after. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, look, I'd be into it if you did it for. I mean, we would. I would support your move. It I'd do be, it if it, it was here. For, it totally would be for science. So. Yeah. If it was here, I'd do it, but I don't have one, or I don't have that yeah. option. Uh, right, or I right, would, right. but uh, um, you and should, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm also trying to, I don't know, lose a little bit of weight. So eating a, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it'd be a one-off. But be a one-off cheat. You'd be it okay. Would be a one-off, and I and I wouldn't have to eat the whole thing. I probably could get the gist of it by eating. Half of it, mm -hmm. I'd be fine. Yeah, you're gonna have um, to Tina. I'm, gonna, I'm considering it. I'm totally considering it. It's funny. It's like they don't have <laughs> TVZ Gun has a point. What potheads get up at 6 a.m.? It's a good point. Yeah, no kidding. You're gonna be. That's the what rush. surprised me. I mean, I, I wonder if that was a mistake, but um, or maybe on purpose. There is nothing on their website about it, so I think you have to go to their. Must be on their Facebook page. But 6 a.m. That seems silly. Doesn't it? Doesn't I mean, that it, seem silly? It's a little on the silly side. <laughs> Carl's Jr. Okay, here we go. I'm going to the uh, going to website. Uh, yada yada yada. Um, Rocky Mountain High. Here we go. Next on 420 only. We're dropping our Rocky Mountain High cheeseburger delight with infused Santa Fe sauce at one Denver location only. 4050 Colorado Boulevard, Denver, Colorado. Blah 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 blah. Um, I <laughs> can't believe they're calling it that. The Rocky Mountain High. Yeah, that's really funny yeah. to me. Wow. But it doesn't say what time. This one doesn't confirm the 8 a.m. time thing. Oh, it doesn't? 289 comments. Crikey. Well. Yeah, you're really, really curious as to when it becomes available. I might. I, I'd consider doing this for the show. And again, I only have to eat half of it. I'd be fine just sampling it. And let let Tina have half. Tristan will eat half. Happily. Oh, Tristan would easily eat half. He'd be there yeah. at six if he wasn't so pooped. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, that, no, yeah. that's great. Uh, All right, we're gonna give this a shot uh, then, or try. We'll see how it goes. That's right. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> Arby's yeah, nothing... should do a competing sandwich. The Central Tremor says they should call it Arby's. <laughs> We've got the meth. That's good. We've got the meth. The <laughs> meth. That's great. All right. Uh, well, funny. that's good. A uh, quick email from... Oh, no, that's it. Those are our emails. Hey, yeah. send your own emails into the morning stream at gmail.com or you can call in your, your feelings and thoughts at 801 That's 801 
Uh, that support we talked about with the T on Patreon is at patreon.com slash TMS. Please send us your love over there. We'd really appreciate it. For everything else, go find us at frogpants.com slash TMS. All right. So, yeah. so I've been scrolling through the comments on this post. Now, you heard me read the entirety of the post, which includes the address as 4050 Colorado Boulevard. Mm-hmm. Uh, so far, I've, I've and just in like the space of 20 or 25 posts, mm. replies to that. Uh, what's the where is you which one are you selling this at great great <laughs> that sounds about right doesn't it yeah that's about right yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, which address is that again oh excellent and what's the name of this restaurant <laughs> what what page am I on on the internet <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you put do, we, if we I'm sending people to Viva TMS Vegas do we have the the details i have not there. updated the details yet i went i uh, had coverville yesterday ended up having to do a bunch of editing on coverville because of some skipping damn it mm. in the recording and uh then i had to do uh some ads and then i had to run to trivia oh, so it's a busy day man busy day so i will do i will update it today. no 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 problem i'm just gonna let people yeah. once again know viva tms vegas will be the place you'll find those details we'll we'll have yes. friday and saturday all filled out so check that out exactly soon. and if you're in the discord uh that information has been updated in the announcements channel so go check it out today uh, if you if you want to know right away go right there nice uh cool. that's it we're done let's uh, have a song do you have a song Yes, Sandy wrote in and said, Hello, Scott and Brian. I have no specific reason for this request other than I am a huge Prince fan. I'd like to request a cover for any time around the anniversary of his passing. I became a fan at age 10 when Purple Rain was released, and his music has been a part of my life ever since. I know he took issue with covers at one point, but I'm not sure if he changed his view or if he just didn't apply his views to himself. But in 2009, he released the album Lotus Flower. That album, by the way, independent release, self-released. That album has a cover of Crimson and Clover. Uh, if you could play that anytime in late April, it would be appreciated. If it can't be done, any cover of a Prince song would be great as well. Thank you so much. Much love to the Tadpole. You guys rock. Love the show, though, Sandy. So, yeah, this was a, a self-release, independent release, so not a, a major label release, which helps me a lot with the, the um, legalities of it. Of course, the ASCAP, BMI, CSAC dues all get paid. Mm -hmm. Prince is the example I always use, by the way. Like I always say, when I play a cover of a Prince song, ASCAP takes a little bit of my annual payment. It gives some of that to the Prince's estate, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So this is from 2009, the Lotus Flower album. Uh, cover of the song originally done by Tommy James and the Shondells. Here's Prince and Crimson and Clover. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Spock sabotage the system. Yeah, sabotage. You say, you say sabotage. I say sabotage. Sabotage. I actually watched the episode. My face looks like a potato. I watched.